Well, hello, friends. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, I'm sad because I feel like I've lost a great friend. You know, I don't hear from Philly 500 like I used to. All summer long, Philly 500 every day, ev I mean every single day, he would send me a little, you know, how are you doing? Cowboys stink. Micah Parsons is coming to the Eagles. The Eagles are so much better than the Dallas Cowboys. And, you know, just showing so much love. But I don't hear from Philly 500 anymore. I'm just wondering, is he okay? Has anybody seen him? I finally caught a little whiff of him on his channel today talking about Hassan Reddick. Now, I, I'm old enough to remember when Eagle fans were telling me, were telling us Hassan Reddick is so much better than Micah Parsons. He just doesn't get the love and the publicity because he's not an America's team. Another reason why they hate us. In fact, let me, you know, here's the great thing about the internet. The internet never forgets. So this was one of those things from last year. Hassan Reddick. I can't remember a season like this. I really can't. He's literally everywhere. Everywhere. Bosa's numbers are crazy. I believe he has 18 or 18 and a half sacks, something like that. But they talk about Micah Parsons like Hassan Reddick isn't having a better season. He is. It's just what it is. He is. But every time Dallas plays... You can't get another word in because it's Micah Parsons. It's Parsons. Oh, look what they're doing with Parsons. Oh, Parsons. Yeah, I remember Nick Sirianni coming up with a game plan against Micah Parsons where he said, let's attack him all night long. Let's look in his direction and react to the moves he's going to make. Let's read and react. Let's pick on his ass. And that's what they did. And it was ah, a chef's kiss game plan. Hassan, right? Okay. So, looking at this year thus far, Hassan Reddick has not been eh, great. Now, now, Philly 500, you know, Philly, son, I don't know where you are. I, I miss you, bro. I miss you. I miss you immensely. I miss all the sweet messages that you used to leave for me and things. I caught him talking about Hassan Reddick. The guy that he said is better than Micah Parsons. Now, that wasn't Philly 500. That was another one. But we've uh, heard, you know, because the Eagles are all world. They're the greatest team ever constructed, according to Philly 500. Their defense is going, defensive line is going to be like the greatest of all times. You're not going to be able to run against them. You know, N'Kobe Dean is going to be all pro and lead the team in tackles. That secondary is going to be picking the ball off all over the place. And the start that they've had has been incredible. They've only given up seven touchdown passes to Kirk Cousins and Mac Jones. Yeah. Yeah. So, Philly seems to have slowed his role a little bit and looks a little bit worried, if you ask me. If you ask me, I'm looking at Philly 500. Look, look, look at the face. Look, look at the eyes. He, he, you know, look at the strain. He doesn't seem to have the joy and the sparkle in his eyes. His eyes look all dark. And look at that. And saddened. But listen to him. He's talking about what's wrong with Hassan Reddick. He's calling wreck it Reddick with a question mark. Breakout game coming versus the Buccaneers. Let's listen to Philly. Yes, it is. And and one of the people that, that everybody's worried about is Hassan Reddick. Hmm. And I really worry about the greatest player Hassan ever. Hassan Reddick will be fine. If you look at Hassan Reddick, you look at it pre previous years, uh, he, he's he's very streaky. He's um, he'll have periods in which he just goes off. And then he has periods where he's a little quiet. And if you remember last year when he was playing with the Eagles for the first time, we dealt with the same questions with Hassan Reddick after the first two weeks. Matter of fact, after the first two weeks last year, Hassan Reddick had zero sacks. Mm -hmm. He had zero sacks versus Detroit, 
and he had zero sacks versus the Minnesota Vikings. I, I think that Hassan Reddick is pretty much just on the same trajectory. Uh, is his thumb playing a part in it? I, I don't know, maybe a little bit. I can't say that it's not. Uh, but, but Hassan Reddick has done this before. Um, when Hassan Reddick gets going, though, uh, he's dominating. He's absolutely dominating. When he gets going. I thought he should have been considered for Defensive Player of the Year last year. And I think single-handedly in the playoffs versus the Giants and the 49ers, he completely took over those games. Uh, I think Hassan Reddick's a great player, and I don't think we need to be that worried about him. But I understand why people are, right? I'm going to explain and show you guys some Better stuff Better than about Micah Parsons. Make, mm. Maybe make you feel better. And then I'm going to tell you my actual real concerns about this team going into the week, okay? Uh, it's actually, I, I didn't realize this, but doing this video uh, this morning, now it's actually Hassan Reddick's birthday. Not like a Jerry Jones' birthday, who is his <laughs> birthday too. He just Always got the Cowboys on his mind. And 17 years old. Happy birthday, Jerry Jones, 6,018 years old. Got to be tough being 6,019 years old. But um, Hassan Reddick actually is having a birthday, at, at, uh, you know, st uh, still on human time. Um, and not on still on human time, time. like uh, Jerry Jones, but on human time. And uh, he's actually turned 29 today. So happy birthday, Hassan Reddick, uh, the one guy I am definitely not worried about. Now, look at this. This is last year, right? I want to show you guys this. This is last year. Here's Hassan Reddick sacks by the month, okay? So, in September, Hassan Reddick last year had one and a half sacks for the mm -hmm. month of September. Um, the first two weeks, first Detroit and versus Minnesota, he did absolutely nothing. He had one and a half sacks versus Washington, I believe was week three, and uh, that was the first we got from him. Then in October, he comes on a little stronger, he has four sacks. November, he has two and a half sacks. December, I don't know why they have January in front of December, but in December, he goes off. He has six sacks in December and two sacks in January. So from week 10 to the final week of the year, he had 10 and a half sacks. He did most mm. of his damage then. Um, and if you go back to even previous seasons, uh, there's, there are months where he has no sacks, and then there are months where he has like six sacks. So Hassan Reddick, he gets, he gets very streaky, and when he gets going... He absolutely gets going. So I, I would not be concerned right now with Hassan Reddick. Um, he, he could definitely go out this game and pull out two sacks, and then everybody's going to forget the two. He could. It's basically what happened last year. Uh, I expect Hassan Reddick to get going. Hassan Reddick's a great player. This is a guy who has had three double-digit sack years on three different teams. And though they've had some good players on different teams with him, they were still different teams. That is a pretty remarkable statistic to have. So I expect Hassan Reddick to get going. I wouldn't worry too much about Hassan Reddick. Mm -hmm. um, I think he'll just be fine. Uh, I expect him to have a big game actually Monday night. Uh, I expect a lot of guys to. to that, I expect a lot of guys. We haven't seen a lot from so far to have a big hmm. game. I think AJ Brown is 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 set up for a monster game. I I really do. Um, Devontae Smith has already had two big games, as far as I'm concerned. I think he'll continue to do his thing. But you know, when it comes to those receivers, just one week you're gonna get AJ Brown, one week you're gonna get Devontae Smith, one week AJ Brown, one week Devontae Smith, and then Dallas Goddard, you're gonna sprinkle him in there, DeAndre <laughs> Swift, all those okay. things. So I wouldn't worry about Hassan Reddick. You I wouldn't think worry. Reddick gets going with the with the great play you're getting from your defensive tackles, Davis and Carter. Uh, I think the Eagles defensive line will really will get it going. The other Okay. Now he wouldn't worry. He wouldn't worry about him. Um, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. This is funny because <clears throat> I'm old enough to remember how he was talking about how good Hassan Reddick is, how good that whole defense is, and how great they are going to be versus the Dallas Cowboys, that the Cowboys are ass-ass and we got no chance. Now, I granted, it's early in the season, but we heard them talking about how great 
the Eagles defense is and how great Hassan Reddick is versus Micah Parsons. Now, let me pull up just a little, little something, something here. So far, now he's saying that, hey, Hassan Reddick, I could see him get two sacks tonight, you know, against, against Baker Mayfield in Tampa Bay, which is possible. But thus far, Philly, your guy versus Micah Parsons has been a big zero. Take a look at this. This is head-to-head, stat-head football stats of thus far. Two games on each of the guys. Micah Parsons, three sacks to Hassan Reddick's zero. Solo tackles. Micah Parsons, six versus Hassan Reddick's zero. Force fumbles. Micah Parsons, one. Hassan Reddick, zero. Fumble returns. Micah Parsons, one. Hassan Reddick, zero. In fact, Hassan Reddick has a half a tackle. One assist thus far versus Micah Parsons. Now, that's not to say he can't go on a tear. And as you pointed out, history does say that he plays better, at, not in September. But we'll see. Thus far, Micah Parsons is literally running circles around your guy. So, Philly, Philly, I miss you, bro. I miss you. I miss our daily conversations. I really do. Football season, thank God it's here. Oh, thank God it's here. Because I'm seeing less and less of the cockroaches. You know how we roll, good people. I appreciate you guys as always. And um, a little message for you Eagles. Fuck them birds. Fly, Eagles, fly. Now we shoot those birds out of the sky. Stupid dumbasses managed to give up a third and 30 to my sexy arm. Pathetic defense and team. No wonder I own those piece of shit frauds every damn year. Don't get me started on the fans. You boo me while I earned a respected award. Losing the Super Bowl was just karma for you fuckheads. I can't wait to drop 100 on your heads next season while being the daddy of the NFC East again. <laughs> <laughs>